A very good morning to you. It's May the 4th, Caleb Ministries. We are still in Acts chapter 2. So many such important once in a lifetime, once in the life of the existence of this earth happened in Acts 2. Right, I'll read. And this is Acts 2 verse 38 and 39. Listen. Then Peter said to them, Repent, and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, for the promise is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. You remember that prophecy of Yuel, Yuel and that uh, Peter uttered yesterday. To fulfill that prophecy but unfortunately the words have been spoken so often and they are almost institutionalized no freshness no relevance no sense of insight just a script we've memorized already but think of what you would have heard if you had been in the first audience a promise that if you align your life with god You'll be inhabited by an explosive power from above. A power being manifest right before your eyes. I want to explain something in short. Now, the human body, our flesh body, remember that was born from the earth. It is made from the earth. All the elements in our body come from the soil. Right? But the spirit, the human spirit, was created by God, and that spirit was created from heavenly spiritual matter. But now, when we are born again, only then is this human spirit, humanly speaking, activated. And only then can the human spirit be invaded or inhabited by the Holy Spirit. This just in brief. Now, true. So some people mistook the power of some other kind of influence, but clearly something remarkable was happening, and it could all be yours. What exactly? What's the problem with words like repent or turn from sins or turn to God? The same could be said of be baptized. They are religious sounding words and phrases that hardly carry any impact anymore. What was required of this audience in order for them to become inhabited by the Spirit of the only true God? Simply this. They would have to acknowledge that they weren't like Him, express a desire to become like Him, let go of anything in the way, and identify with Him. It's as if God was saying, I want to connect with your, your hearts like mine, and change the world. If you can handle having a heart like mine, come with me. And 3,000 people accepted the invitation. So after that sermon of Peter, and after the Pentecost, on that exact time, after the, the preacher said, repent and of your sins, be baptized, and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 3,000 people were born again because now they were under grace. The church age, we are under grace. But remember at Mount Sinai, they came through the Red Sea from Egypt to Succoth, and shortly after they came to Mount Sinai. And there the law was given. Well, now what happened, the difference between the law and grace, whilst Moses was on top of the mountains in the cloud, the people got Aaron to make themselves two golden calves, and they started to worship the calves. But when Moses came down, the fury of God was kindled against those people, and 3,000 would die, were killed because of that. And of course, they were under the law, for the law is a killer, but grace is light. Why, have, why don't we have more of God's power today? Perhaps it's because we haven't aligned our hearts with His in every area. 
We're stuck in old ways of thinking and old patterns of living. All it takes is an actual shift, not just the desire, but a real turn towards Him. And the gift of the Spirit is ours in increasing measures. Pray, Spirit, is there any obstacle between us? Any change of heart or mind or need to make? Show me and let me see more of you in Jesus' name. Amen.